In this video, I'm sharing my story of how I left my nine to five job and some things I learned along the way to help you do the same. Let's go. Hi, I'm Shay. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I mainly make videos about Etsy. I just started on Etsy at the beginning of this year and my goal is to grow my Etsy store to a six figure business by the end of the year. So most of my videos are geared towards Etsy and digital products because that's the space that I am in. But I've decided to make this video to share my background a little bit more because although I am new to Etsy this year, I am not new to the world of online businesses and making money online. And actually a couple years ago, I was able to leave my nine to five job and make money full time online. So that's what this video is about. So growing up in the United States, I learned that the path to success was to get good grades, go to college, get a good degree, and then get a good job and work in that job until you retired. <laughs> and so that was um, my plan. That was my path to success. And growing up, my family didn't have a lot of money. So I craved financial security and I craved sort of the ability to pay my bills and have a little bit of spending money at the end of the day. But that's really what I craved. So many of my decisions, especially early on, centered around this craving for the financial stability that a good degree and a good job could provide. So when I went to college and I was picking a major, I remember literally Googling highest paying bachelor's degree. And what came up at the time was chemical engineering. These days, that's probably more like computer engineering or computer science, but at the time it was chemical engineering. So I did end up getting a degree in chemical engineering. I loved math and science. I'm kind of a bit of a nerd, so it fit perfectly. And honestly, I did really love school. It was really challenging, but I loved the atmosphere of school and I just loved learning and all the fascinating things I was learning in the engineering realm. But at some point I had to start working as an engineer. So the summer before my junior year of college, I got my first engineering internship and it was at a natural gas pipeline company. So this internship, it was for the summer, it was full time, 40 hours a week, and it paid a lot of money. It actually paid $31 an hour, which nowadays is a lot, but back then this was like seven or eight years ago. That was a lot of money as someone that was still in college and didn't have a degree yet. And to me, that was just such a large amount of money. So I was so excited to start my engineering career at this company and hopefully continue to intern there and then work there full time when I graduated. But as I started that internship, I was about a month into it when I realized that I completely hated it, like absolutely hated it. And I just couldn't wrap my mind around the idea of going to work nine to five, or in this case, it was eight to five with a one hour lunch break, five days a week, week after week after week for decades. Like I could not wrap my mind around that concept. And I just remember going to work and looking around and being like, some of you have been here for decades. How in the world am I supposed to live this life for years and years? And I honestly felt like something was wrong with me. I was like, am I the only one that has a problem with this nine to five lifestyle. And there also was a substantial amount of guilt in there as well, because I had, th I had this amazing opportunity. I was making a lot of money and I honestly felt guilty about not liking it. And so I kind of just buckled down and was like, I just got to keep pushing. Um, this obviously still was in my mind, the path to success. So I just kept working even though in the back of my mind, I still had that nagging feeling that this just wasn't for me and just wasn't the lifestyle that I wanted for myself, but I couldn't think of any alternatives. So I just continued on that path. So during college, I met my husband and we got married right as I was about to graduate. He also was an engineer and also was on basically the same career path as me. So we were very much deep into this nine to five lifestyle and kind of thought we had our lives planned out. So when I graduated, I had about two weeks break before I was going to start my full-time engineering career. And 
During that time, I was like, you know what? I have a little break. I want to learn as much as I possibly can about how to move up a company quickly, you know, be ambitious, climb the corporate ladder. So what I did is the day after I graduated, I went to the thrift store and bought as many books as I could find about um, career moves, about personal finance, business, really just any books, any self-help books that looked interesting. And one of the books I happened to buy was this, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And this still has the thrift store tag on it for $1. This is the best $1 I've ever spent. Um, I won't go into detail about this book. I suggest you read it yourself. But this book basically opened my eyes to truly how you be successful and build wealth. And actually the idea of being in a W-2, 9-to-5 job your entire life is actually the worst way to build wealth. And the better path to wealth is actually investing and having your own businesses. And this concept absolutely blew my mind. But once I learned that the path to success was not that 9-to-5, it really made a lot of things click into place in my life. Um, and gave me a lot of relief realizing that I wasn't crazy for not liking that 9 to 5 lifestyle. And I felt like what I had been told about success up to that point wasn't necessarily a lie, but it was severely lacking in information. So from there, I basically just dove in and started reading so many books and podcasts about investing, real estate investing, all types of personal finance, business ownership, marketing, financial independence, early retirement, Basically, a whole world of knowledge was opened up to me that I had no idea even existed. So because of what I had learned, I knew that I wanted to invest and I wanted to start my own businesses instead of just working this nine to five for the rest of my life. So I shared all of this information with my husband and he eventually was on board. But I was about to start my engineering career in just a couple weeks and so I did go through with that and started my engineering job. And my husband was working as an engineer as well. And so while we were working, we did these three things. The first thing is that we saved every penny we possibly could. Um, most of the time we were at about a 75% savings rate, which is an insanely high amount um, for most people, but we were extremely fortunate with us both having the higher paying engineering jobs and we didn't have any kids either. The second thing I did is I continued to learn as much as possible. I would spend hours every day listening to audiobooks and podcasts about investing and personal finance. And then the third thing I did is I started a bunch of side hustles. I knew that I wanted to leave my engineering job as soon as possible, but I didn't want to do that without first having a side hustle and another form of income in place. I tried so many different things. I actually tried print on demand. This was way back in the day, probably in like 2017, but I wasn't doing it on Etsy. I um, actually just had like a Teespring or a Redbubble account or something and I <laughs> Would I create, would create my designs and then I would run Facebook ads to those designs in Redbubble. And it wasn't very profitable. I think I like barely broke even after ads costs and everything, <laughs> but I learned a lot. Um, another side hustle I tried was like a fitness blog um, because I was interested in fitness and that didn't go anywhere either. But while I was trying these side hustles, we were also saving the money because we wanted to invest in real estate as soon as possible. And so once we had enough money saved, we bought our first investment property and we did what's called house hacking. And it's basically just where you buy a house with multiple units, you live in one, rent out the others, and the rental income pays your mortgage. On our very first purchase, we did this. It was a two unit property, but the property was pretty expensive compared to the rental income that we were getting. So in order to completely live for free, we also rented out a room in our unit. And we rented it out to an old Scottish woman. Um, and it was actually a super awesome experience. People thought we were, were absolutely crazy. They 
probably still think that we're crazy, but we were able to completely live for free and that enabled us to save even more money. So we just kept on this path working as engineers, saving as much money as we could, investing that money. And then I kept trying every side hustle under the sun. In June, 2020, I started reselling as a side hustle. And at the beginning, this involved me going to the thrift store and flipping products online on eBay and Poshmark for, pro for profit. And the place that I would go to mainly was called the Goodwill Outlet. It's a wild place. <laughs> um, it's basically a warehouse full of these massive bins that have stuff that didn't sell at Goodwill or excess donations, whatever they're trying to get rid of. And you dig through the bins, you know, find what you want, and then you pay by the pound. And it's like a dollar fifty or two dollars per pound or something. So it is so cheap. And I was selling women's clothing. So you can imagine like one article of women's clothing cost like a dollar and then I was able to sell it online for say $20, then that was a great profit. So that's what I started doing as my side hustle. And pretty quickly, I was able to see the viability of this to become potentially a full-time income. So I really just doubled down on it and just tried to scale as quickly as possible. I watched a ton of YouTube videos about reselling. I learned about different brands, what sells well, what doesn't sell well. So I did this for about, I think, eight or nine months. And then in March of 2021, I from, from my reselling, I was making probably about half of what I was making as an engineer. Um, and I was still working as an engineer. But at around this time, my husband and I decided to move across the country. And my husband actually got another engineering job across the country, but it didn't make sense for me to try to find a job in the same place when I had had this side hustle that I really was wanting to bring up full time. So I ended up quitting my job in March of 2021 and I was absolutely terrified because my side hustle hadn't fully replaced my full time income yet but I knew in order to really scale up, I would have to dedicate a full-time effort to it. So that's what I did. I'm fortunate that my husband was super supportive of my decision to quit engineering, and then I just dedicated all of my time to reselling. I ended up scaling up a lot. I stopped sourcing at thrift stores, and I mainly sourced in larger quantities like pallets, and I would go to sample sales and large warehouses and buy a lot of products at once so that I could really scale. And then it took about, I think like five or six more months before my net profit in a month from reselling finally was the same as my income as an engineer. So I had finally matched my engineering salary. And reselling is still my full-time job now. I am passionate about it. I love it. it I'm selling women's clothing and it's super fun, but I kind of got to a point where I could not scale further without running into a lot of logistical issues because I'm selling physical products, I store the products myself, I photograph the products myself, I ship them myself. So scaling does get really complicated the bigger and bigger you get. And I also was so tied to a location because I ship three times a week. I couldn't really go on vacations because I always had to hurry home and ship. And long term, I just didn't want such a restrictive job. So that's actually why I started an Etsy at the beginning of this year. And my goal is to eventually fully transition into Etsy and not sell physical products on eBay and Poshmark anymore. I loved the idea of selling digital products on Etsy because it can be semi-passive in the sense that you can list a product once and it can sell over and over again. It's completely location independent and it's flexible. I can work on it at all hours and from anywhere. So now on to three things that made it possible for me to quit my nine to five a few years ago and how I think you can do the same. So the first thing is to have a financial runway. So a financial runway is basically the idea that you have a certain amount of months of expenses saved up, preferably like six months to a year of 
your income saved up so that when you do transition from your nine to five into into scaling your side hustle full time, you still have money and can give yourself a runway to fully take off and launch that side hustle. And I got this concept from the book Set for Life by Scott Trench. I highly recommend checking it out. And obviously you want proof of concept from your side hustle before you quit your nine to five. Um, and so for me, it made a lot of sense for me to be making several thousands of dollars a month consistently and have that proof of concept, have that financial runway. And then I was able to just quit and take off my side hustle from there. And throughout this process, I learned that the financial security that I really craved when I was younger, it doesn't come from a nine to five job. It doesn't come from a single source of income that could be gone like that if there's company layoffs. And I had seen that. I had seen so many layoffs over the course of even just my few years as an engineer. But financial security really comes from having multiple streams of income, having that financial runway, being completely in control of your finances, having knowledge about personal finances, and being able to make decisions for yourself. Okay, the second thing that I think will really help you be able to quit your nine to five is the idea that success leaves clues. You really don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to starting a side hustle and generating money online. There are thousands, if not millions of people that have done it before you. So what I did when I was learning about reselling is I watched so many YouTube videos and just learned so much. And the same goes for any other side hustle. Just look into what the successful people are doing, learn from them. And the third thing, if you've watched my other videos, you know I can't go a single video without mentioning this. You need to be consistent. Once you have proof of concept on your side hustle, you need to work consistently towards that. In my mind, it's like, if you can make $500, why can't you make $5,000 or $50,000? It really just takes putting in that consistent effort in order to scale. And most people lack this consistency. So if you can do it and take action consistently, you can beat out almost any competition. Just my last bonus tip is just understand that you have the ability to really craft the life that you want. You don't have to settle for a life or a job that doesn't suit you. It's going to be uncomfortable and painful to take risks and take a leap, but ultimately that's less painful than staying stuck in a job that you hate. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. If there's a topic in this video that you want to learn more about, you want me to make another video about, please let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. See ya.